Bucks Day is Bucharest. I'm with Michael, who's just giving a talk in about 15 minutes. So yeah. we're tight for time on handling billions of edges in a graph database. So part of your talk is how you overcome the limits of scalability with a graph database. What is it about a graph database that presents that challenge that a relational database doesn't? So the um, graph databases focus more on actually the uh, information on the relation. So you can do the same things with a relational da database in terms of storing, but for the query model, typically graph queries are way, way more complex by joining lots and lots of the records together. And if these records are distributed across several servers in a cluster, it's really hard to execute this query because it just jumps from server to server and back again. And then at some point you have to pull everything together in one location where the client actually requests the data from. And because these pops are very, very expensive, it's pretty hard to scale a graph database. Is a graph database the best thing then for hard handling large amounts of data? Um, not always, but that depends on your use case. So if your use case is certainly a graph use case, you don't have another choice. So the easiest way for handling like large distributed data would be a p-value store. But they don't have complex query mechanisms. It's just, okay, get one value by a key, and that is somewhere in the cluster. But you cannot do joins and do complex transformations or finding passes that interconnect different things. What's the benefit of using a graph database? That's the benefit is that these complex queries are actually possible inside the database, and you do not have to well, implement everything yourself. You get consistency guarantees, uh, you get hopefully good traversal uh, speeds, so traversal is the types of queries that you can execute. Um, and graph queries or graph algorithms are typically rather complex, so if you want to implement them yourself, it would be a lot of effort. If the database does that for you, it's better for you if you want to use them in your application. When you're um, thinking about how to overcome the limits of scalability, is there anything you can do? Can you? Is there a way to... So you talked about queries having to go from one area to another and yeah. maybe moving across clusters. Yeah. How, what do you do? What's your strategy? So um, you can, well, if the database actually knows what the data actually looks like, it can take benefit out of it because then you can move data local, local so that you can do the search mostly locally and just parts of it remotely. And therefore the queries in total will be way faster. How do you programmatically ensure that you've got the data that you most often use? Is there a mechanism within the databases? Or? Yes, there is certainly a mechanism in the database, which is called sharding. And the database that I'm working for has some secret source of this sharding, <laughs> which I'm not allowed to talk about. Oh, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the key takeaway from your talk? What do you want people to go away and have learned? So what I would like to... to teach people is that when you're having a graph problem, think twice if it's actually a distributed one. Yeah. Uh, if you don't get away with it, you have to think, okay, which is, which is the hard problems where I have to be prepared for and where are the issues that I want to wanna tackle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, try to find out this locality and help the database to actually improve the query speeds. And be aware, if you don't do it, it like, takes seconds of, uh, of queries instead of milliseconds, which you would expect which can be fatal in some systems. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you think, okay, I have one second to load this entire page and I have to do a 20 second graph database query behind it, then it doesn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, um, what's the most interesting question you've been asked? You gave this talk uh, last week at Bristol. Yeah. So the most interesting question is the one that I can't answer. How do we do it? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, maybe yeah. that's for another, maybe that's for another interview. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but um, also it's um, always what, what are the real use cases for graph databases because a lot of people that just can't imagine yeah. that graph databases are in use and actually the use cases get more and more and more and more important. So Facebook, for example, social graphs, they don't do it with a graph database for certain reasons, but actually the data that they have is a graph. They could do it in a graph database. And presumably that's to do with um, clustering groups of yes. people. Yes, of course. So that for Facebook, for example, it would be a good idea to group all these people that are tightly connected, those are friends, and then you have these queries all local. Well, good luck in your talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.